is paid. Uh, so if they if they are called out, they get so much an hour or something, or what is that? And the second question goes with that. If if needed in special times, this is like this is when needed to approve notices of intent permits and permit supplements on holidays and weekends, which which would improve service quality. Um, is there a real maybe Steve you'd have to answer this? Is there a real rush uh, for those on the holidays and the weekends? But they have to be done then. Is it because of people's poor uh, planning, their lack of uh, prior planning? Is this what put us in the, the situation of having to have a biologist available? Yeah, Steve Burkside, Commissioner. Um, yeah, 24 hour notice of intent, if there's a, a pest uh, invasion or crisis, and they have to use a certain pesticide, they have to notify us 24 hours in advance. So. You know, under certain circumstances, it may be necessary for us to go down and we have to take notice of intent, review it against the permit to make sure that uh, the information is accurate and complete. And, and that, uh, but if they need, if they need somebody, uh, did, uh, could this be arranged to where or uh, set up to where if somebody's needed special time and it costs extra, then the user pays? No, we, we can't. We're not allowed to charge under the, the government code. Doesn't allow us to charge for any of our services related to this. So we don't charge for permits? Nope. So we don't do any of those things? So you can't charge for that? No. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, quite a few pages here. I made some notes. Um, if you'll allow me a second to flip through the pit, different pages. And some of these are, are new re, are new positions. And some of these, Roberta. Um, yes, there are there are requests for new positions. Okay. And these have all been approved. No, none of these have been approved. Okay. Are they a budget? No. So these are all somewhere listed in this um, other slot over here. Correct. All right. What happens, Steve, if you don't get the overtime for the ag biologist? You can just say from there. Well, then we don't go work on weekends, and if somebody has to apply a pesticide um, that requires a permit and notice of intent, it would be denied. And, um, because they probably call you, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they do anyway, Steve. <laughs> Are they saying nice things or not? Um, well, it doesn't, but I mean, I can understand, you know, I can understand uh, Steve's uh, <laughs> position and point because agriculture is seven days a week. It's not something that just operates Monday through Friday. So it's only logical that we would have, need to have somebody available uh, on weekends. And, and pests and other farming conditions or agricultural conditions would also, uh, based on climate change and what have you, and our proximity to the border, etc., where the border fence doesn't eliminate or or obstruct pets from going across the border, etc. And that's why you would need somebody available on the weekends. And if they're scheduled to work Monday through Friday, well, that's where the overtime would come in. Yeah, and you know, as an example, let's say for instance you've got a uh, you know a young crop in the ground and a range real heavy, um, you need to get a fungicide to keep the uh, you know the the, the, um, the mold from. You. You know, taking out the crop, and if that happens on a Saturday or Sunday, you need somebody to come into the office and approve that uh, that request. Okay. Well, well, I don't know. Are you listed on your Steve? Uh, <coughs> not. No, I'm gonna. Uh, yeah, under other. You're under other. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got a couple others in there actually. Well, other than that, go ahead and have a seat. All right. We don't want to have your presentation here right now. So sorry. Thank you for the answer to the questions. That, that's it for now. Are we ready to go? Okay. Um, reclassifications. Um. Okay, Ron Bronson, Director of Human Resources and Risk Management. Every year we, uh, according to our policy procedures, request from the departments any reclassification requests. Those are people that are currently working in a position, however, uh, because of uh, accretion of duties, their job really has changed. And uh, this year we, we have been uh, using CPS as our 
human resources consultant. Um, we've changed previous years we were using a uh, prior company and uh, they were very thorough. They, act, they interviewed everybody that had a request. There was a total of 14 requests uh, submitted by various departments and after our analysis we're recommending to the board that uh, are we? of those 14 views there should be a three classes in the big classes. It's about, oh, I got three fourths of the way there. And then are your tabs colored? Um, are there no. color tabs in there? They're white. They're white. Budget crunch. Three classification requests. <laughs> okay, there's there's an attachment one where it says proposed reclassifications. And it's about four or five pages into that. <coughs> look something like this. Yeah. And those those, those are the ten that we are recommending. The back up behind it. And then the next page behind that gives you the fiscal impact. Uh, the fiscal impact for these particular reclassifications is minimal. It's uh, the departmental cost is and this is broken down between uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different departments is thirty thousand dollars. I have a Question on a couple of them. Okay. If I could. And actually, there are the sheriff's ones, so I don't know if the sheriff wants to come up and answer these. Uh, your, first, your first request is for an account clerk two to account clerk three. This person works under the grants, helps manage the grants. Don't you have a grants person out there? You had a grants position? Uh, somebody <coughs> can do that? Actually, uh, we're in the process of uh, obtaining a person to get. We, we lost that person. Well, why would you, uh, maybe just a um, basic question, why would you need to do that if this person is already is going to fill that role? Well, I think that the uh, the problem was that uh, the, the uh, position was, was doing a uh, dual purpose, and uh, we've, uh, we're trying to uh, make sure that that person is doing that particular job. Well, it, uh, yeah. other. I don't maybe understand that answer. So, Scott Schmidt, business manager for the sheriff's office. In the grant program, the sheriff's offices, uh, historically speaking, there's actually been two uh, segments of the grant program. One was for the management and, excuse me, obtaining and management of the grants, and the second was for the accounting and the reimbursement. Um, and we've had a account clerk. Two that has been doing all of the uh, grant reimbursement, grant tracking, grant accounting uh, that the um, grant analyst had not been doing. And more than likely, once the position is filled because of, of the terms of the grant and because of accounting standards, you need two people. Um, so there's a separation of duties to continue on with that. Okay. Uh, one other one while you're there, Scott, let you answer this. Okay. Uh, on the third position, you have uh, an assistant three. This is the one that handles. Where are you, Gary? This is page two of the sheriff's um, request. Oh, okay. I don't so. The second one on page two. I want to mention the name. So, uh, this is a person who works in support of human resources. Uh, you have an HR person already at PSO, right? Yes, sir. Uh, that works full time there. Does all the HR work for you? Actually, they work for the human resources, and they're assigned to you. But for all intents and purposes, they're they're there because they they're there all the time. So they're 100 percent to you. Um, is uh, is this person? Um, it list. I, I, my concern is is that uh, it's just the way that uh, we know that sometimes reclass is just a way to get people more money. But uh, that's that's fine. But your human resources person does most of the work on that, and this person talks about that they're 80% dedicated to that, but they also uh, give a lot of support to the undersheriff and the sheriff. But the sheriff has a secretary already, has his own dedicated secretary, as I understand, right? Uh, so what's what's the, I, I, perhaps I just am short on the justification why this particular person, slot, not person, the slot needs to be reclassified up to an office deck. So, but that, I just have is there something that this person does that the uh, HR person doesn't do? That I'll defer to Sheriff, because I, I was not involved in that particular uh, reclassification process. 